Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Painting with Martin. Today we're looking at another reconstructive painting of the Cave Centipede from Mice and Mystics, the board game. I primed this one in black because it was painted blue before. It's supposed to look like a centipede, which is kind of like brownish, reddish, uh, beigeish, something like that. So we're going to start get right into it and try to uh, make this one look a little bit nicer on the table. So as you can see here, it looks a really nice and scary uh, monster for our friends uh, battling it. So the first figure, um, the first thing uh, we're going to paint is using some XV88 from Citadel on the kind of like um, the belly part or something like that. Called it's thinned about 50/50 water, and we're just going to smooth us things over like this very very easily. Um, you don't have to worry about not getting the sides. And as I thin the water, I just want to make sure I don't obscure all the details here. And once the belly side is done, it's going to look a bit like this. You can add another layer or two if you think that the black is shining too much uh, through the paint. But otherwise, you go on to the next step. In this one, you're going to use uh, Mornfung Brown, also from Citadel. Um, and use it on the flat side of the top. You can already see here, maybe I'll show you a little bit more, that you can see some hints of the blue here shining through. That's how it looked, uh, how it used to be painted like. And my client didn't like that, <coughs> so <coughs> we are going to move on to cover the top with some Mournfung Brown. And this is kind of has kind of like a reddish tone of it uh, compared to other regular brown colors. Um, which I like. Can be a bit tricky to get all the details down into the bottom part of the miniature, but with a little bit of practice you can get it done. And then it's going to be looking quite nicely. And something like this as the first layer doesn't have to be perfect but make sure that it blends quite nicely into it and maybe a second layer will be useful because it's the black is a very strong color underneath and you just want to make sure that you cover it quite nicely so cover the sides as well i'll angle this one so you can see it here you go. Adding another second layer with a very thin paint. Um, almost, say, 50-50 water, even a little bit more sometimes, uh, can really make wonders to bring out those beautiful details. And as you can see here on the side, um, you can easily just curry into it like this. And you can blend it in with the new color, with the other color from below. And this is what we call, if you add, take some water on your brush, you can actually blend this one in together using a wet brush. Uh, and that means it blends the colors in very nice and smoothly, which means that you don't, you can kind of skip a few layers there. Once you blend it in, it means that it blends in the colors in a nice way. That is what we call, and I'll mention it again, Called wet blending. Sorry about that. And it means that the bottom side here might get a little bit of the top side as well. Just make sure you just cover the sides. Okay. And once that's one done, you want to make sure that the claws up here are also kept black. So uh, you'll paint those black in a bit. But the frontal, frontal, I don't know what these antennas are also going to be kept in this brown, one thing brown color as well, as well as the underside. So already it's starting to look a little bit better. But you also want to have the legs covered as well in the basic paint. And for the base, for the basic paint, I've chosen to use a mix of um, Vallejo's khaki 
as well as XP88 from um, uh, C uh, Citadel, which is going to be a slightly different tone variation for from just the regular XP88, um, giving it a slight different in colors. Something like this. Don't forget the other side. Don't worry, we will darken this one with some some shade in a bit. So if you think it is too light, we will sh uh, we will darken it. For the fangs, I'm using some uh, something called glossy black from Vallejo. So I'm going to look it up, take it up right now. And also for the face, I forgot to tell you that the same khaki mix was used for the face up here. Or I don't know if you can call it a face, but that's that's what I choose to call it. And hopefully you can see it if I'm angling the camera like this. With some glossy black. Don't forget the insides of the fangs. Something like this. Now they look quite scary now. Otherwise, we're waiting for this one to dry, and when when it's once it dry, we're going to put some. Uh, shade over it and we're going to use Agrox Earth Shade from Citadel, which is a nice color um, and I'm going to show it to you right now. So if you if your uh, if your yours is already done You can put cover this one entirely in Agrox, Agrox, Agrox Earth Shade from Citadel's color um, It says shade here. So uh, use it undiluted over the entire miniature and uh, That will really shade up some of these nice legs or whatever you want to call them uh, and, and these areas uh, please uh, keep in mind don't shade the fangs up because they're going to be shaded in null oil or uh, black wash from uh, black shade from um, uh, from Vallejo so you can do that already and I'll be back just in a few seconds once this one is done So before you shade any miniature, uh, but make sure that you shake the bottle vigorously, vigorously, and of course with the cap on, uh, to make sure that all the paint, uh, all the paint pigment is shaken up really well. Uh, then you just apply the uh, shade across the entire miniature, except for of course the fangs, and we'll see how this will show out. Something like this. We'll bring out the detail and the scales very nicely as you can see here hopefully it won't be too much glare the my apologies because the shade actually gives it a bit of glare from the light um that's the way of the both the light and the um the shade itself Shading this. Don't forget the small legs. Turn it around. And the sides. And already it's looking much, much better in my opinion. I'll turn this one up so you can see the inside here as well. Don't forget the inside of the mouth, the eye part, and really soak those eye sockets as well. Don't leave any part except for the fangs unshaded. 
And if you live in a sunny area of um, the world, Mediterranean or the US, Southern US, or um, maybe the Middle East, uh, you can leave this one out in the sun for a few mo moments and you can uh, get the, the speed, the, the, the drying time of this miniature much, much faster. Or with an area of plenty of ventilation works as well. So with this one done, with this one uh, not done, but um, the shading uh, applied, just leave it to dry and come back for the highlight and finishing touches of this miniature. Which I will show you in just a few seconds. Just making sure I get everything touched. All right. So stay with me. I'll be back very shortly, a few seconds for you guys. Uh, but if you're painting this simultaneously, uh, make sure it gives it, give it a, a good time to dry. Um, with these shades, it shouldn't take that long. And this is what it looks like when it's completely uh, dried. Um, you can see that it's, let's see if I can zoom in here. Uh, it's very, very, let's see if I can turn another light source. Hopefully you can see that it's like very dark, almost a bit greasy. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna take our dry brush and we're gonna dry brush over the entire miniature on the back side using the original paint, which is uh, Mournfunk Brown. And with dry brushing, as always, you uh, take some of, you soak it with paint, um, like this, and then you wipe off pretty much all the paint of the brush, like this. Making sure that only a small bit actually remains. And this is an excellent approach to actually smooth out those lines where the um, where the wash has pulled in a too excessive way. And it also sets it up really nice for the um, um, the highlight that we're going to do in just a second. Now, with that one done, we're going to do the same thing for the underside, but instead of Morn from Brown, we're going to use our colors of XV88. Same thing there, it's taking it off a piece of paper, kitchen towel, and Can be a bit, could be a bit more coloured on it here. So it's a heavy dry brush, which means that more paint is left on the brush, which will save us some time for the highlight. And that one is done. Let's see if this one is how you see it. Great. With that one done. With that one done. We're going to apply the base paint again, but lightened up with a little bit of white, such as this one, Vallejo White. And Mournfung Brown mixed in with a bit of white, and, and we want to cover only the top sides and uh, not the, the scales here. See, the scales will be visible. as well as the frontal fangs. And when we apply it in a stickling motion towards the back.
taking, taking great care not to touch the scale itself. And you can apply this in a few layers if you like. Only applying a little bit of paint on each stroke of the brush. And underneath here, you don't really need to apply that much because it won't really be visible. Instead, you can focus on the scales that are actually seen uh, from the viewer's perspective. So just like this. And then the final two scales on the back. Here, something like this will do quite nicely. And you can apply another layer if you want with an even stronger highlight if you like, such as this one to highlight the head. And this is what we do a layered, this is what we call a layered highlight, such as the top of the fangs here. but not pure white, of course. And if it becomes too light, you can just go over and color it over with a little bit of Morphin Brown. You want it naturally to have a little bit of a darker color, so you can actually apply some darker brown, some pure Morphin Brown over here if you like on the sides, on the, on the top, I mean. Looking a bit like this. Uh, now we're going to pay our attention to the underside of the belly, cleaning the brush in between, and we're going to apply the same um, Mournfung Brown, no, the same XV88 over again, but pure XV88. And we again, we don't want to cover the scales. So hopefully you can see here what I'm doing. like this. And once you, this one is done, you can actually, and once it's dry, you can apply some, and we're going to come back to this one, we're going to apply some pure, uh, some pure XV88 mixed in with a bit of white. But we can go back to the original, uh, like, leg parts, and do that the same thing with khaki mixed with white. And we want the upper side of the kind of like arms or tentacles to be showing because the lower side is not going to be showing any light and that means they're going to be standing out and if you can try not to cover the scales here as well I did that before because I didn't see that 
So try to discover only the scales here as well. that and the small parts of the fangs out over here can also be covered with this part should be paying attention to the eye details here and we will paint this pure uh, this white car gimmicks around the eyes to make them make them really stand out as well as the mouth parts. Can't really see much from the mouth parts, but if you've got an original figure, maybe it will show some teeth there. And some but a bit more repairing work on the tentacles here. Now we can go back to the underside of the belly, painting it with some XV88 and mixed in with some white. You want to make sure that this one is like showing where the sun would go. So underneath the head, not so much, but just on the scales where the sun would actually show more. And you should use this technique in most figures. Where would the sun go? Take a lamp. Where does it shine? That's where you should put in most of your highlights. Okay, um, the final step here is going to paint the eyes. And I want to make sure that you can do this yellowish, or you can do this reddish, you can use another color if you like, but I think pure evil is actually red. Uh, so what I'm going to do here, and I know this may be a little bit against the picture from the artwork, I'm going to paint them with some Mephiston red from Citadel. And it only requires a small single dot such as this. I'll bring back the camera up in a second. If you can see that, something like this. And it makes it look really evil and nasty and stuff like that. Now, the only thing you need to do here is paint the base in the color of your choice, uh, seal it with some varnish, and then you're good to go. That's the uh, centipede from the board game Mice and Mystics. If you like this board game, if you like this video, please don't hesitate to give it a like and click the bell button below here so you don't miss any more of my videos. If you like this video and other of my videos and if you like the channel, the best way to do so and say thanks is uh, just hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it and that means I can continue working this with these videos because I know people are listening or watching. So um, until next time, go and put some paint on those brushes, start painting the miniatures and thank you and very much for watching.